Hey everyone, today I'm going to walk you through the basics of using random.range in Unity. We'll do this by creating a simple scene in which we can instantiate random objects by clicking our mouse button. So to start, we'll open up Unity and we're given our blank Unity scene. The first thing we're going to do is create a 3D object put a plane in the scene and we'll create a material call it green and give it a nice green color drag that onto our plane and now we'll want to create the object that we instantiate into the scene uh, to start we'll just put in a basic sphere We'll go to the sphere's position and we'll zero it out. Maybe pull it a little bit above the plane. And now we just want to make sure that the sphere has a collider on it. And the plane also has this collider. All right. So we're going to want to give these spheres a couple different colors. We'll add some materials, blue, make it blue, and then we could just press control D with this blue selected in our assets and it'll copy blue over, right click to rename, yellow, and we'll control D again to duplicate yellow over and rename this to red give that a nice red color alright now we'll duplicate this sphere four times over so that we have some random objects to work with uh, it's a good idea to get in the flow of duplicating objects copying objects and working with prefabs so first we'll put We'll press Control D to duplicate the sphere, move it over, duplicate again, move it over, duplicate again, and move that over. And then we'll pull over these materials onto each of the spheres we have here. And now in order to turn these spheres into prefabs, we can just drag them in to our assets folder. You can see our assets folder is starting to get a little messy, so we can create a folder for prefabs and toss our prefab spheres into there. And then we can create a folder for materials and toss our materials into there. And next we can create a folder for scripts. And this is where we're going to put our new C sharp script which we will call spawner double click spawner to open up Visual Studio and once we're in Visual Studio we're going to want to write a script that will randomly bring these game objects into Unity so first we're going to want to declare an array of game objects. To do this, you type public game object, and then these brackets represent an array, and we'll call these, uh, how about objects? Oh no, yeah, objects. Next, we'll declare a vector three, and we'll call it pause for position. We're not going to use our uh, start function, so we can just erase that. Next, within our update function, we're going to write an if statement that checks to see if the mouse button is being pressed by our user. We do this by asking if input.get mouse button zero. 
And then from within this, we're going to call our random function. And we'll call this spawn random. We've yet to write this function. So we'll do so right here by declaring void spawn random. And within spawn random, we're going to want to create a random vector three. And a vector three is a transform position that consists of an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate. So in order to create this random X, Y, and Z coordinate, we're going to want to reference the scale of our original scene. And while we're here, we can also delete uh, these objects from the game scene because we've already saved them as prefabs. So let's delete those spheres. And we can look at this uh, plane right here. And in order to get an idea of, of how large this plane is, we can throw in an empty gr game object and zero it out. And when we pull this slider, we can see that the Z goes from about five to negative five and the x goes from about five to negative five as well because this plane is a square um, so these are the numbers that we're going to want to use uh, when we're spawning this random location if that makes any sense so it's always good to reference the uh, the space that you're spawning to so uh, in our original function I'll have the float x, and a float is just a number with a decimal point, and we're going to set this float to be a random number, and in order to do that, we'll type random, dot range, and within these parentheses, we can type the range that we're trying to uh, uh, generate this random location from. So since our plane is about five by five, how about we generate this X coordinate to be within negative four and four. And then we'll set a float of Z to random dot Looks like IntelliSense is trying to fill that in for me. And we'll also have the float Z be between negative four and four. And then for our Y coordinate, we'll want the, the spheres to, um, to generate a fair bit above the plane. So we can use a random range of let's say one to five for the Y coordinate. And now we're also going to want to declare a private integer. Uh, we'll name it random int. And within our spawn random function, we'll call instantiate, which is a built-in unity function instantiate and then we'll instantiate a member of the objects array and within these brackets is the object that it will call in and we'll have this number uh, be based off of a random integer and this random integer within the spawn random function will again call a random range that can be anywhere from zero to the length of the objects array. And we do this by setting it zero comma objects dot length. So th the instantiate uh, function takes in three arguments, or three parameters. Uh, the first one will be the object, or the game object that's being instantiated. The second argument is uh, position in the form of a transform position and the third argument is a transform rotation so for the second argument of position we'll throw in a new vector 3 
whose x, y, and z coordinates match the x, y, and z floats that we've set earlier in the function. And then the rotation we'll just keep as transform rotation, which will default to zero. Uh, these are spheres, so we aren't concerned of setting a random rotation. And then we'll save this. Oh, we made a mistake right here. Instead of random int equals random int dot range, we want this to be random int equals random dot range. And to keep um, Visual Studio from autofilling, you can just select anywhere within the text editor while you're writing the word in order to cancel out that IntelliSense. Um, sometimes it'll just randomly fill it in for you and it can be quite annoying. So when we go back to our Unity editor, make sure that uh, you've saved spawner.cs. So when we go back to our Unity editor, we see there's no console errors anymore. Um, I don't really like how the camera preview is set up right here, so I'm gonna move the, the view of the scene to somewhere that makes a little bit more sense. And then I'll press Control shift f with the camera selected to change the view. And so with the main camera selected, I'm gonna pull this spawner script over onto the camera. And we see now that we have this public array of objects. Um, we can set the size here to four for our four sphere prefabs. And when we go into our prefabs folder, we can just drag and drop these spheres over And now when we press play, we see the spheres are being randomly generated, but they're being generated in sort of a weird way. So when we go back to um, our script, I see I write, get, I wrote a git mouse button instead of git mouse button down. And this is why we have this weird behavior with our spheres. So instead of having them generate like that, I want them to generate one at a time. So I'll just make sure this is git mouse button down instead. Give that a save. And now when I go to play it, they generate one at a time. I'm going to add a rigid body to my sphere. You can select uh, multiple prefabs at the same time to add components to each of them. And so now when I go to play, the spheres are dropping. It's sort of a boring game. So I've added a, uh, an animated game object. Uh, you can download it from the description of the of the YouTube video and so we can just download this game object we'll make a new folder for models And now, once we have this worm model in here, we'll set the loop time and apply it. And then we also want to pull this into the scene. Create an animator controller We'll call this worm AC and we'll add our animation to this. And now when we press play,
we can see that our worm is animated. We'll add a capsule collider to our worm and we'll edit this collider to be somewhat the same height as the worm. It doesn't really matter. This is just for reference at the moment. And then with our worm selected, we'll pull different colored materials onto them. Control D to duplicate the worm. Control D to duplicate the worm again. Control D. All right. And now all these prefabs are made. We can pull them into our prefabs folder. Unity will ask you if you want to create an original prefab and we'll say yes. And now we can delete these from the scene. We can go back to our main camera, which has the spawner script on it and change our array to eight. Now we can add the worms to the extra uh, elements in this array. And now when we press play, we can spawn spheres, worms. Oh wait, what are these worms doing up here? You want to give all these worms rigid bodies as well. All right, and there you have it. That's how you use random.range in Unity to instantiate random objects into your scene.